Hello and welcome to this Godot tutorial. My name is Dan and this is my games channel. I've been using Godot Engine for the past few weeks and working on projects and I found a few things as a sound engineer that might be useful to anybody doing uh, games in Godot. So anyway, let's get to it. Uh, right now I just have this very simple uh, game set up um, if you've gone through the initial tutorials, you should know how to set this up. I have a, this button here. Turns on some music. And then I have this button here. Tuba. Just plays that sound. And right now, these sliders, they don't do anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up. So basically right here, you can see... If I look at my script, this is the script for the node 2D at the top. And basically, I just have a function whenever the tuba button is pressed, it plays the tuba stream. And whenever uh, this is turned on, if it's true, it plays the music. And if it's, if it's uh, false, it stops the music. So very simple setup here. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make these volume Make, make these into volume sliders. These are just vertical sliders. If you go into here and type in slider, you'll see both horizontal and vertical slider. We're using vertical sliders. It really doesn't matter. Here's the tuba slider right here. And I've already set the music slider to uh, kind of how we want it. And the tuba slider, what we want, um, I'll show you. The minimum value is minus 24. And this is just, I don't know, just the values I've, I've found that work. And the max value as zero because we're going to be setting these in decibels and basically we're going to we're just going to want them to turn down. They're already at the level that we the max level that we would want. So anyway, um, in order to get these to work, we need to connect them node-wise and what I uh, would recommend using is a value changed. So we take that connect it to our parent node and here we see on music slider value change so um, now this gets into uh, something in audio so down at the bottom audio and this is our bus layout and um, th I found this is the easiest way to control and have different control over different types of sound so I'm going to add a bus and basically um, a bus is where sounds can be mixed together and then that can feed into another bus and this is our master bus so basically this is a new bus we're going to call this our music bus and in a game setup any kind of background music or anything that you want to be controlled by the music can be sent to this bus and that's all set so now we get into our actual coding of this slider. So we need to access the audio server. It's a low level kind of thing in here. And luckily you just need to know the name of it. Audio server, audio server, there we go. And it's just there. And there's a function where we need to set the bus volume. And that is set bus and I'll just go down to it set bus volume DB and now we have to tell it which bus so this is important um, when we look at our mixer the one on the left our master that's bus 0 the next bus over is bus 1 so we type in bus 1 and then we need to put the volume db float and that will be value now just so you know this is not the ending way that i'm going to have it i'm going to show you what this does so this music slider is, is um, getting a value and it's going to be feeding into this bit of code this line of code here and i'll show you the effect turn on the music Well, that's because I forgot we need to send our music stream on the inspector. Now, this can be done in code, but it's pretty easy. 
we need to choose a target bus and we want to send it to the music bus. So that should work now. Okay, so we can hear that works, but when I move it quick, it kind of glitches out. So what I found is that um, we want to basically interpolate or kind of um, make it a smoother uh, fader, like a like we would find on a console. Um, right now, the slider kind of the values are too different uh, when you move it fast, so we're getting digital click clicking. So basically, we want to average um, where the slider is between where it's going and where it was. Uh, and so to do that, we use a function called lerp. That opens up that. And again, we want to open up our audio server dot and then we'll what we'll do is we'll get the bus volume to get the previous value get and it's down there somewhere get bus volume db of the bus one and average that with the value and then that needs a weight as well and what i found is that Point zero or zero point five works just fine, and that should work. Oh, I need an extra parentheses at the end just to close up our function. And now, when I play the music and move the slider, we don't get any digital clicks, even when I move it very fast. It's not perfect. I mean, if I really, really slam it, there's a little bit, but in general, it's just a lot smoother. So one other thing you'll notice is that when we're all the way down, it is still not all the way off. So what I found is that um, if you have more than 24 steps, like uh, the, the other value I tried that's larger is 30. So basically what I'm talking about here is this music slider here. So we can only give it so many steps and there is no absolute zero. I could do like negative 80, for example. Let's try that. We gotta make that negative and play that. And we'll see what that sounds like. So it pretty much brings it down to nothing. But as we can see, the usable range of our, like really, we're making it a very small area up here that the slider is actually effective. So I prefer to use negative 24. And just like, unfortunately, that's that seems to be a, a good number. You could use something like 30, maybe. And so, again, we don't get absolute silence if we turn it all the way down. So anyway, um, easy way to deal with this is to go back to our script and say if value, which is the value that the, um, the slider is sending, if it's equal to minus 24, oh, I need the colon, and then we get back to audio server. Oh, I typed that out wrong. Audio server dot, um, and this would be set bus mute down here. Set bus mute to true, and then else. Do the same thing. Set bus mute to false. So basically, whenever it's down all the way, 
we will see that let's see what did I do wrong oh we need to give it the uh, the bus number so of course that's bus one we need to give it a target bus and that's our music bus start up the music bring it down and as we get to the bottom Let's see, what did I do? Oh, if it equals minus 24. There is no 24 on that. So let's start it up. So as you can see, that, that feels all right. You can experiment with different values. 30 is okay. But I, I feel like that's pretty close to what you would want. Like, having it switch off there it's a little bit so let's try let's experiment a little bit go to back to the slider and let's say minus 30. all right so we'll do minus 30 and then in our script we will change this to minus 30 as well So is it is a little bit of a jump from that to that, but I think that's acceptable. And so really quick, um, well, I'll just show you again. This is our tuba. As you can see, we still haven't set up our slider with that. And so just for review, we don't need the actual, well, we'll use the actual mute thing too. So basically I'm just going to, well, first of all, I need to grab this slider and connect the value change. Use a double click. Okay. And then I'll just grab this and just change these numbers. So also what I need to do is change this bus to a new one. So let's create what I'm gonna call our sound effects bus, or just call it SFX. And that will automatically be bus number two. So all we do is just change all these values to two, the target bus. All right, and then we should have the same sort of behavior on bus two. Oh yeah, and uh, I do want to, since we went with 30 in this case, this is all gonna change depending on how big your sliders are in your user interface. So we'll turn that on, and we have that. We have our tuba, we can turn that down. Okay, that's not working right now. Let's figure that out. stream oh yeah we didn't set it to the right bus there we go okay let's try this out all right so now both are working and you can see it's at the bottom it's muted so what I mean by uh, it will be affected by your user interface let's say this fader is a lot taller. Let's actually do it with the music one since that's a more constant sound. So if that if we are able to get faders that big, all of a sudden we're off we have the option of a lot more precision. And you can see the, the fader is going to jump a bit because there's only 30 steps. So in this case if it's bigger you may want to consider consider using a larger number Let's try 40. This is just like a resolution of the fader. And up here, I we'll want to change this to 40. All 
so it's a little smoother. And when we get down here, it's very quiet before it turns off. The, the smallest step. You may not be able to hear that depending on what you're listening to, but um, it's there and it's something to consider when you're doing something like a sound mixer in your game. It's a great thing to have, I think. Uh, I definitely enjoy having them in my game and being able to customize sound as an audio person. So let me know what you think of this tutorial, and thanks for watching.